It's often confusing to distinguish between toxic anterior segment syndrome, or TAS, and endophthalmitis. TAS is an acute inflammation in the eye following anterior segment surgery. It's not only after cataract surgery. It could be after glaucoma surgery or PK. And by definition, it's non-infectious. <clears throat> Symptoms of TAS and signs of TAS are somewhat similar to endophthalmitis. Patient has decreased vision, red eye, minimal pain, irritation, and usually TAS develops 12 to 48 hours after the surgery. There is anter anterior segment inflammation, such as hypopion and KP, and also there is corneal edema, and in TAS, corneal edema is limbus to limbus. But the highlight is that the inflammation is only in the anterior part of the eye. So this is TAS, and by definition, when we have vitritis, then that become endophthalmitis. The highlight and the difference is to find vitritis for endophthalmitis. These are some examples of TAS, limbus to limbus corneal edema. We may have hypopion, and in the later phases, the pupil may be enlarged and not responsive. Etiology of TAS is anything, anything that we use during the cataract surgery or similar surgeries. For example, intraocular solutions can be a cause of TAS. Balanced salt solution, if there is imperfection in the solution, even the ophthalmic drops, and a stabilizing agent. The viscoelastics that we use can be a cause, and especially if the needle that we use with viscoelastic is a reusable cannula, and there are some of the former viscoelastic left in the cannula. Also, cleaning solutions that we use to clean our instrument are cause. For example, enzyme and detergents that are being used, ultrasound bath, and so on. Intraocular antibiotics can cause TAS. And intraocular anesthetics, especially if they are not preservative-free, can cause TAS. Also, IOLs can cause TAS. So basically, anything that we are using, any foreign material that we are using during cataract surgery or glaucoma surgery can cause TAS. Treatment of toxic anterior segment syndrome is different compared to endophthalmitis. The first and important thing in treatment is to rule out infection. And the primary goal is to decrease the inflammation by giving a lot of steroids in TAS. But since sometimes it's difficult to distinguish the two, after you give the steroids, you need to follow very carefully in a few hours just to make sure that the symptoms are getting better, the signs are getting better. If they are getting worse, then that may be endophthalmitis. Endophthalmitis is well known to this Crowd here, you all know there is hypopion, and the highlight is vitritis, vitreous inflammation. You, if you see this in the VA scan, then that's endophthalmitis, it's not TAS. Differentiating TAS from endophthalmitis is important, and the main reason that's important is for TAS, you use steroids, and for and ophthalmology, we use antibiotics. If we give the wrong agent, the disease gets worse. Is there a way to always distinguish these two from each other? And unfortunately, the answer is no. But there are some factors that help us to distinguish the two. TAS happens shortly after the surgery, 12 to 24 hours. While endophthalmite is post-operative, endophthalmite takes two to seven days. Remembering like if one organism during surgery gets into the eye, for developing end of time, one should become two, two become four, eight, and grow until you have millions of organisms in the eye to, to find clinical end of time. So that, that takes some time. While TAS is an inflammatory reaction and happens shortly after surgery. And end of time is most of the time, not always, but most of the time is painful, and TAS really has pain. In TAS, the vitreous is clear. What in endophthalmitis, the highlight is vitritis. But we need to remember something, that when we have corneal edema, it's very hard to judge if there is vitreous inflammation or not. Sometimes we have to rely on ultrasound. 
And in TAS, there is, by definition, there is no microorganism, while in endophthalmitis, there is organism. Again, this doesn't help you when patient is sitting in your office, because by the time the culture comes back, you probably already know that is it TAS or endophthalmitis. It takes three days for culture. And uh, corneal appearance is helpful. TAS is limbus to limbus corneal edema. But endophthalmitis in the earlier phase, there is the limbus to limbus is rare. The question comes, which one is TAS? The one to the left or to the one to the right? It's not that easy distinction, but because there is limbus to limbus edema, the odds is the one to the left is TAS. From management point of view, management of TAS is steroids, and management of endophthalmitis tap and injection. However, in general, we have a low index of suspicion for endophthalmitis. If we think it's 20% chance of endophthalmitis, it's safer to do tap and injection of antibiotics, and then if it didn't get better, add steroids. Thank you very much. Ron, one to make things more complicated. What is about the term pseudoendophthalmitis? Does it go with TAS, or how what is your opinion how to differentiate, or maybe that is no yeah. longer actual? So pseudoendophthalmitis is an inflammation that happens in the posterior segment, like, for example, after injection of Kenalog with preservative that uh, we have a reaction, and it's, uh, it's not infectious by definition. Uh, that's, um, and the similar situation is toxic posterior segment syndrome. So that is very difficult to distinguish between that um, pseudoendophthalmitis and endophthalmitis. We use our best clinical judgment. For example, if we inject Kenalog and the next day we see some granules in the AC um, and we see the eyes looks quiet, it doesn't look very red, then we assume it is pseudoendophthalmitis and not endophthalmitis. But when any time we are in doubt, it's better to tap and inject antibiotics because the risk of tap and injection of antibiotics is less than 1%, while risk of endophthalmitis is very high. Thank you. Thank you.